Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield talking to my favourite people. And trust me, there is nobody better than Ken Dodd. How are you? By you, young man. What an introduction. I can only wait to hear what I'm going to say. (laughs) You know the thing about you? I was looking in my little black book, and there you are, every Christmas for the last 15 years, talking to me. Haven't you got more sense? Yes. 15 years. You still haven't got it right, have you? (laughs) I'm still practising. 15 years. That's a long time to wait for a laugh. (laughs) Well, not as long as you, because I was just listening on stage, and it's something like 55 years you've been doing this. 55 years, Alex. 55 years slaving over a hot audience, and I've enjoyed every second of it. I'm completely and utterly stage-struck. I don't care who I say it to, and who doesn't believe it. I'm stage-struck. I just love show business. When when I'm at home, if I open the fridge and the light comes on, I do 10 minutes then. (laughs) I was just talking to the theatre manager just a few minutes ago and I said, how's he doing numbers-wise? Sold out within a week, they said. This is unheard of for anybody who's been doing it half as long as you to sell this many tickets with virtually no press. Your audience love you, don't they? And they find out about you. I think it's sort of um, revisiting the youth, I think. I keep going around these theatres, the same theatres, for year after year after year. It's got to be like, I've got like a window cleaning around. It's like a window cleaning around. I, I just uh, keep going back and they say, well, uh, oh, you're here again, are you? Yes, okay. Well, uh, give us a good uh, do then. Uh, keep it clean, get in all the corners. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, welcome back, it's, which is very nice. We've played new theatres, old theatres. doesn't matter, as long as the theatres. Like, yeah, yeah. And next year I hope to uh, keep going. We call it the happiness tour. We usually start off around about now, uh, Christmas time, which is uh, a time for uh, happiness, merrymaking, Merry Christmas, Happy Ticklemas and all that sort of. A man said to his wife, he said, what do you want for Christmas? She said, surprise me. So Christmas morning, he leaned over in bed, he said, boo. Those gags go very well. (laughs) The thing I admire about you the most is you've got nothing to prove at this point. You don't have to put up with any nonsense. You do the show you want to do where you want to do it. That's a great place oh, to be, no, isn't no, it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm still a servant. I'm a servant of the, the public. Uh, I'm like the sort of, a, you know, the waiter, the head waiter, and I, I ask them what they want and see if they'll uh, enjoy what I give them. No, 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 the audience are always the boss. The, you're always working for the audience, and, and it's a pleasure. It's, it's, a, it, it's, it's a delight to try and serve the public. and uh, send. It's more important to me what people say when they go out than when they come in. If, if they've had a good laugh and they've enjoyed themselves for, for uh, half an hour or so, I've, uh, I've enjoyed it. I tell you one of the greatest thrills for me is standing on the side of a stage watching you go on and seeing how you come alive. Something happens, doesn't it? When you play an audience, you play an audience like you play an instrument, like you play the violin, you play the audience the same way because you, you, you sense something, to, well, it tells you something inside you, tells you where the, where the quiet bits are, where the quiet crowds are, where the, uh, where the noisy uh, bunch are, <laughs> and, and you learn how to um, coax them, make them happy. Make them happy, make them contented, make them make them feel good. That's what a, that's what a comedian is supposed to do. You're a jester, a jolly chap, <laughs> yeah. and you're also quite brave because you talk to the audience. So you never know what they're going to say back. No, if you're, yeah, that's, that's one of the thrills. Uh, part of your act it's like a kaleidoscope. The first part of the act is building the bridge between you and the audience. Then you can do all sorts of hello jokes. At my, you know, on my way to the theatre, and uh, what a beautiful place. And the, the, then you talk about the most important uh, people in the building, which are themselves. And then you can start experimenting um, with different kinds of you. you can do topicals. You know, a couple of uh, not 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 too political, but one or two uh, jokes about politicians. Lots of jokes about uh, men and women and, and love and love life and uh, that sort of thing. When, when you've sort of made friends with them, you can ask them what they do, what their name is, where they're from. And from that, it, it's up to you then to try and uh, feed off the audience and see. Uh, you can't do for uh, not too long, but certainly for 10, 10 or 15 minutes, you can, uh, you can mingle with your... This is National Mingle Week. You can have a, a good mingle with the audience. Yeah. Have a mingle, it makes you tingle. And in terms of getting a new gag out and getting a laugh for it, is that still as thrilling today as it was oh, 50 years ago? Oh, that, that is it. That is, that is the reason. That's one of the main reasons for being a live performer, is the, um, the trying out of new jokes, new, new ideas. New ideas, new one-liners, new patter, new isms. Oh, that is, that's the thrill, that's the excitement. That's uh, it's the same sort of excitement, say, that a, 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 a steeplechase jockey must feel when he goes over Beaches Brook. It's a sort of, uh, 
It's a sort of thrill uh, a skydiver gets when he, when he jumps out of an aeroplane. It's uh, the thrill of trying new material out on an audience. There's no, no feeling like it. It's wonderful. And, of course, what we get with your show is a variety show. You bring other people on to entertain. Oh, oh yes. It's not just, not just Ken Dodd. The Ken Dodd Happiness Show is a, is a variety show because I, I'm keen on variety. I love variety. And I keep telling everybody that variety is the best kind of show business because they're all different acts. As well as that, as well as being a, a sort of a, a lively show in which people don't have to listen to one person all the time, it also gives a lot of people, uh, give a, uh, a lot of young people and, and mature people, gives them work, you see. And you, you've got to give variety artists work. Uh, a variety artist only comes alive when he's got a, a real audience, a good audience in front of him. And uh, I flatter myself that I bring a, a very good family audience in, mums and dads and sweethearts and lovers and lodgers. And then we have a marvellous magician, one of the greatest magicians in Britain, Amethyst. He has this beautiful girl which he saws in half, throws the best bit away, keeps the bit that eats. <laughs> Uh, so and, that, and that lays the groundwork for me to go on then, and uh, I, I've got the, all their goodwill going for me, see? It's quite selfless, though. A lot of acts are quite jealous of other performers who are good. You actually embrace oh, that no, and no, say no, the better no. they are, the better you'll be. Yes, indeed. It's always great to follow a good act. You should always follow a good act. <clears throat> then your act uh, will always go well. Uh, it, following a duff act is very, very difficult because you have to try and win the audience back again. Right. Uh, those that have stayed. <laughs> I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a piece of music and I'm going to come back with a fact that's going to blow people away about Tears for Souvenirs. We're talking to Ken Dodd on your favourite local radio station. Tears for Souvenirs by Ken Dodd on your favourite local radio station. It's Alex Belfield talking to, in my opinion, the greatest comedi comedian that ever lived and that will ever live in this country for many reasons. One of the reasons is, is he's not best known for being a comedian. He's also known for being an award-winning singer, a talented singer, and a guy who sold more singles with Tears than John Lennon sold with Imagine. It's incredible, that statistic. Well, I was very, uh, I was very fortunate to find this, uh, well, it was found for me. It was a waltz originally. It was an old-fashioned waltz, Tears for Souvenirs. And this uh, wonderful man, Jimmy Phillips in London, he said, I think that would make a good, sing it with a country feel. You know, put it in, uh, for, uh, make it a, a nice swingy four. Uh, and, uh, and yes, it did. It hit the spot, yes. In fact, it, at a time in 1965 when the whole nation was going wild or rock and roll, along came this uh, lovely corny old song sung by a corny old uh, comedian and away we went and we sold two million. The, the last line is tears of happiness. That's, that's the one I want to remember. I found happiness in about, 19, uh, about 1960, 1962. Uh, a, a great song by a man in America called Bill Anderson who also wrote uh, 8 by 10 Still were some wonderful songs. So I've had 30 songs in the top 20, which is not bad from a, for a comedian from Naughty Ash. And that's the point, isn't it? That as well as being a comedian that loves comedy, you love music passionately, don't you? You couldn't oh, live without your music. Oh, yes. Well, I, love, I, love, I love a good song. I love good melodies. And I love, we love uh, good orchestrations. Because an orchestration sometimes can make, can make a song. I mean, uh, brilliant uh, arrangers like George Martin, um, Nelson Riddle, they are just as important as the composers or the, uh, the the singers or musicians. They make the song not just come alive, but become absolutely unique. I'm really lucky to get to speak to most people in show business when they're plugging something, and many of those are comedians these days. It's taken a new turn now where it's gone from being men in clubs doing jokes to men filling arenas. Would that be comfortable for you, talking to 30,000 people? No, no. No, the kind of comedy I enjoy, I love being one of the audience. I love talking to the audience and uh, being, uh, becoming, becoming one of the audience and listening to, uh, listening to some of the things they say to me and some of the things I say to them. And it's, it's, a, it's an, an, intimate, uh, an intimate atmosphere. So I'm, I'm more comfortable with uh, a thousand people or two thousand people or even, well, three thousand is just about. I can do that, the, the big, some of the bigger shows we do. Uh, two, three thousand, fine. But but these huge giant ones, and a lot of the comedians I see working these arenas seem to walk up and down a lot. <laughs> they, they walk up and down a lot. I think they believe that a moving target is harder to hit. I think, but they do. They wear. They must wear a lot of boot leather out. 
there's another a well known he's a well known young comedian and he, he hurls himself all over the stage I've never seen a man sweat so much in all my life <laughs> so he's he's wonderful he's a wonderful comic but uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how much longer he can last because I don't think you can throw yourself around like that all the time and, and still uh, still keep fit and you're not going to like this question because it's a compliment and you don't take those very lightly but I get to speak to all the comedians. I've never had one say I don't like Ken Dodd or don't admire him for what he's done for comedy. Is that nice at this point in your life and career, knowing that you've paved such a path for these people? Well, that cost me a lot of money in bribes. <laughs> cost me a lot of money in bribes. I, I send them all a crate of champagne every now and again. No, I, it's very nice to be respected by your, your colleagues, particularly the younger people coming up. It's nice to me. I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy being a, an old sage now. Not, not, <laughs> not stuffing, but uh, it's nice to be respected by younger people coming up. You know, and some of them are very, some of them are excellent. And of course, Naughty Ash is your home, but really the stage is your home. It's been your home for most of your life. Yeah, yeah, that's when I I feel happy. When when I'm on stage, that's me. In terms of the audience still coming and you being able to do it, did you ever think that you'd get to this point in your life and still be selling out and doing the business big time? Every day is a good day. Every day that you can find something good in it. People sometimes say... um Retirement, I say, no, no. When a man, a man retires, when he stops doing what he doesn't want to do and starts doing what he does want to do. <laughs> I'm doing what I love doing. Show business, performing, Ken Dodd's happiness show. That's what I love. www.kendodshows.co.uk is the place to go and you can find out all about the tour that you're doing continually. It never stops, does it, really? That's the thing. No, it's an ongoing the happiness tour. I'll keep going as long as they want me. I'll be there. And Christmas is just around the corner then. Looking forward to it, are you? Yeah, happy Ticklemas to all our uh, to our <laughs> listeners. Yeah, of course I am. Good Christmas, wonderful time of the year. Everybody, everybody, even if it's only for one day, everybody loves everybody else. That's a, that's, that can't be a bad thing, can it? Now, we, now we've got to make it last all year. Do you ever go carol singing? Yes, I used to do. Yeah, I was in the church choir till they found out where the noise was coming from. <laughs> and we used to go around people's uh, houses and they used to come out, give you a, uh, a hot mince pie and a hot penny in your hand. Only the other night, only the other night, we were out carol singing with the, with the Diddy Men, mm. the Diddy Men and myself, and we ran along to this uh, this big house, and we and they sang the little hearts out the Diddy Men there, and the light was on, the light was on upstairs, and the man came down, and he, he gave us a quid apiece. He said, "There, lads, you, you sang so well tonight, and you you deserve it because this is a lighthouse." <laughs> Kendall, I love you. You're our greatest comedian ever. And thank you for being you. Keep on keeping on. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Alex. And a Merry Christmas to all you listeners. Well, both of them. A Merry <laughs> Christmas to all you listeners. And a very happy and a peaceful new year to everybody else. Thanks a lot, folks. All the best.